Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I want to convey to you what's really going on in my head right now. I know on my channel I like to present kind of a happy-go-lucky attitude about things uh, that, uh, you know, while things could always go sideways and things could always go bad, uh, you know, I always like to think that that's a, a small chance and that generally things go reasonably well, but we prep for those moments in life when things don't go well. You know, you don't have to live in fear of constantly being in a car accident to put your seatbelt on. You don't have to live in constant fear of being locked out of your house to throw a key outside in case you happen to lock yourself out of the house. So just because something's unlikely doesn't mean that it's not worth preparing for, especially if the preps aren't that difficult to, uh, you know, implement, and especially if the preps are something that no matter what, you know that you're going to be able to use them. Anyhow, so a lot of times on, on my channel, I don't really want to push the idea that things are imminent. There are plenty of YouTube prepping channels out there that do that all the time, and I'm a fan of many of them. They uh, act as kind of like a, a fire under my butt to, you know, get me thinking, you know, I really got to get up and, you know, do a little bit more work because, you know, things could go bad and, you know, I don't want that to happen to myself and my family. And that's what this video is about, is if you are someone that mostly watches prepping channels like mine, which are incredibly rare, so it's hard to imagine that unless I'm the only prepping channel you watch, you're not getting a lot of, you know, the doom and gloom channels as well. But if you are getting your stuff mostly from people that are saying, you know, here are some fun things that you can do that, you know, help you during an emergency. Uh, you know, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, uh, you know, how I'm feeling in terms of, like, there being a fire under my ass right now with what's coming down the road ahead of us. And, um, I'm not used to talking like this, but, uh, I'm, I'm pretty concerned at the moment. I think the last time that I uh, released a video like this was in January, uh, just before COVID happened. Uh, it was about a month before... Trump issued his statement saying that it was going to all magically go away, it wasn't going to be any kind of a big deal, it wasn't going to kill people, it was going to like stop at like seven people or whatever. Uh, this, even mainstream media wasn't really paying attention to it, uh, but myself and some other uh, people in the prepper sphere uh, were really concerned about it. You know, there were a lot of... Um, there were a lot of characteristics of what was coming down the road with COVID that had us concerned. And there are a lot of similar, uh, similar characteristics now, uh, you know, related to supply chains, uh, environmental factors, economic factors. And uh, I, I'm being honest, I'm pretty concerned at the moment. I'm kind of in high gear, uh, you know, trying to get myself uh, to a point where I'm feeling a little bit better. And you guys have been watching my channel for a while. You know, I'm in a pretty comfortable place. You know, I've got access to water here on my land. We just finished our, our new homestead build. That's all working great, but not everything's complete. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've done videos on this in the past as well. No matter how much preparation you've uh, accomplished, you can always do more. So it's, you know, you, you don't want to get too big into the game of, you know, critiquing like, oh, I'm ahead of you or you're behind me or whatever, because no matter where you are, you can always improve your situation. So that's where I am right now. And again, I'm feeling a, a great deal of urgency. Uh, you know, again, between economic factors and supply chain factors and, uh, you know, environmental factors. In fact, the two big things that I've always talked about in interviews, whenever I've been interviewed by somebody, um, and it actually has happened a couple of times, even though I'm, I'm kind of a small channel, I've been reached out to on a number of occasions, and there's always two things that I know, because the question always comes up, what, you know, what, what's the one big thing that, you know, you're really afraid of? Because, you know, all these things, they, they pitch fear, and that's kind of where preppers are usually seen. You know, it's like, what are you afraid of? Uh, and I don't like to answer the question like that, but I always do have an answer, and it's, it's usually two things. One is our economic situation, uh, where things are in terms of uh, national debt and uh, the United States dollar being used as kind of the world currency. Uh, you know, when that changes, and that will change at some point, that's going to mean major changes for everyone uh, you know, living with the present system, where the United States dollar is seen as infallible, and that's the place where you put your money. As soon as that changes, whether it goes to some kind of a cryptocurrency or whether it goes to some other national currency of, an of another government, uh, that's going to be a really big wake-up call. And Well, it'll a wake-up call suggests that there's still time to get up and do something. It's going to be a huge change for everyone that's just gotten accustomed to the idea that the United States dollar has a lot of buying power. Um, there's a lot of writing on the wall that we're really getting close to the end of that. And, you know, people talk about, like, uh, you know, getting back to normal. You know, uh, it, you know, we've been in this difficult situation since COVID uh, came up, and we're, we're talking about we want to get back to normal, get back to normal. Well, you know what? There is no such thing as normal, and if there is 
normal for human beings, normal for the human species, is that we are an incredibly uh, uh, non-multitudinous uh, population of a few hunter-gatherer groups spread out over the planet, uh, no technology, no industry, uh, and we kind of like just pick and scavenge off the land and we're at the, the mercy of you know, various diseases and other predators and things like that. That, if you're gonna talk about normal in terms of what have human beings been used to for the most of their existence, that's normal. I don't think anyone wants to get back to that. That's pretty awful. Um, but people always are talking about, well, you know, we're gonna get back to normal. And what normal for most people means is, you know, what do I remember throughout my lifetime? Human lifetimes are but a blink in, uh, you know, geologically, but a blink, and it's still but a blink of the eye in terms of historical perspective. Uh, and the historical perspective of, you know, what it's like to be a human being is that occasionally there are empires that come up and they're very powerful and the people do very well in those, but they don't tend to last very long. The United States has been in kind of its empire phase. I don't know if that's offensive to you to call it an empire, but, you know, a phase where it's a centralized authority and it's got fingers all over the known world. At this point, we think it's the entire world that we're, you know, we think is the entire world at this point. Uh, but, you know, historically in the past, you know, the known world was like the Mediterranean region or, you know, you know Far East Asia or something like that. Um, but, you know, we've been in this kind of empire phase where we've been the top dog, you know, pretty much since the end of the Second World War. You know, there was a little bit of back and forth with the Soviet Union, you know, right after the Second World War. But we've been in this phase for about like 50, 60, 70 years uh, where the United States has been on the top and people here have been pretty comfortable. That's not normal in terms of human existence, in terms of history. That is an episode, and episodes begin and episodes end. Usually if it's an alien invasion episode, it lasts for about 10 to 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, you know, when it is an episode of world domination, it, you know, usually lasts decades, maybe a couple of centuries, but, you know, then there is a uh, fading period. That doesn't mean that that's the way it always has to be. You know, maybe that's not a rule of nature, but it's the way that we've seen things so far. So getting back to normal would be that we continue back to this, um, uh, kind of normal where empires rise and empires fall. Empires rise and empires fall. So getting back to normal means getting back to the reality that at some point the American, and again, I know that's offensive to a lot of people to call it an empire, but there's a lot of people that definitely see it that way. Um, getting back to normal means getting back to the idea that the American empire rises and the American empire falls. And I think we are getting back to normal and that normal includes you know, the fading of the power of the United States in terms of being a single, singular world power. Uh, when that happens, a lot of things that many people in this country uh, and around the world have gotten used to are going to go away or change to something different, and you need to be able to adapt to that. Changes are coming, I think, and they're going to be big changes. They're going to have an enormous impact on people's lives. If you have been alive over the past year or so, and that would mean that you're older than like one year old, so I presume that you have, uh, you know, you've seen that things can change pretty dramatically, pretty quickly, and the changes that we've seen over the past year, I think, pale or will pale in comparison to the changes that we see coming. Big economic changes, I think, we're on the cusp of, and I think it's prudent to get ready for that. There are all sorts of, uh, you know, video. I'm not going to get into like you need to do this, you need to do that, but it would be a good idea to kind of have a sense of what you would do for yourself and your family if a lot of the income that you are used to having access to, you know, wasn't what it is presently. You know, if that started to dry up, what would you do? Do you have a backup plan? Uh, you know, a lot of people don't own their homes. Uh, that's just a fact of uh, a lot of American life. We live on debt, we live on credit. Uh, I, I've been in a position through most of my life where I've always been able to just save up for things. I am very frugal, I save up for things and then I buy them. The current homestead I uh, am on, there was a little bit of a, um, uh, a time sensitive nature to it. So I did borrow some money, but I borrowed it from family. I don't think that they're gonna evict me if we get uh, you know, into, into hard times. Uh, and I plan on paying that back very quickly because I don't like living in debt. It makes me feel uncomfortable to, uh, you know, feel like I am indebted to, uh, but it, it, it just makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't think I have to describe it to you guys any more than that. I don't like feeling like I'm in debt to someone else. Uh, I like to be even Steven Square. Let's like settle up and everything like that. Um, so if you got into a situation where, you know, your primary income source or your primary way of making your living changed, you know, what could you do to survive? You know, you may have to give up some things. You know, if you don't own your house, you may not be able to continue living in that house. If you set up some plans now for that eventuality, 
or possibility, I don't want to call it an eventuality, but if you set up some plans now for the idea that you could lose your home, if that does happen, and hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it does happen, if you have a plan for it, you're going to be a heck of a lot better off than if that happens and you don't have any plan. If you didn't lay any groundwork whatsoever, start thinking of a plan now. It would have been great if you had done this a couple years ago, but you, you know, if you haven't, you didn't, and this is where you are right now. Start thinking now is better than not thinking about it at all. Have a plan if the monetary system changes and you're not one of the lucky few that, you know, get thrown into whatever this future is going to be in a, a, a positive place. That could happen. Get ready for that. The other big thing that I always mention when I'm interviewed uh, that I think is a real wild card and could be a real curveball for a lot of people, I'll try to throw some more metaphors into that as well, uh, are environmental um, uh, changes, uh, climactic changes. I know that that is uh, offensive to some people. That's fine. If you don't want to listen to the rest of this video and you don't want to prepare for any of that because you just don't want to think that that could ever happen, I honestly don't have a problem with that. If you don't want to look at that as being a possibility, if you want to fixate mostly on you know, aliens invading by air-dropping bird flu infected clown zombies or you know, whatever else, and those things seem plausible, but the idea that you know, uh, the climate could be changing or that people are changing the climate, if that is so offensive to you that you just don't want to listen to anything else that I say, that is totally fine because I wouldn't mind living in a world where all the people that are that close-minded, because maybe it's wrong, maybe I'm wrong and scientists are wrong and maybe that's not happening, but to be so close-minded as to not even uh, listen to the evidence, I honestly don't mind living in a world in the future where people like that have uh, self-selected to go extinct. That is not offensive to me. Please feel free to not prepare for that if you find that idea so offensive that you just would not want to exist in a world that uh, you know where that would be a real thing. I have no problems with that at all. For all the rest of you guys that want to, you know, that either think that that is possible or probable, or you know, just it's prudent to prepare for it just in case. Who knows? Uh, get ready for that because we, as human beings, are so reliant on the planet with the climate system that it has had. Uh, you know, for the last several hundred years, when there have been snaps and changes in the climate, even minor, uh, minor. Um, I don't know whether they say mild or minor. It both means the same thing, though. Even when they've been small changes, it has had huge impacts on societies. Empires have risen and collapsed based on climactic changes. And climactic changes in the past have happened you know, through natural cycles. They happen repeatedly, uh, the one that we're in right now. It honestly doesn't matter whether it's human-caused or natural. You might say, well, if we know that it's human-caused and we could do something to change it, I do not see people rising to that challenge. Uh, I don't know if you do. Um, I certainly have tried to reduce my uh, footprint on this planet as much as I've been able to. I feel like I've done a pretty good job. Uh, I don't see a lot of other people out there like me, and I'm not going to like whine and kick and scream, insisting that everyone has to be like me. The way that it has usually been throughout history, and this is another one of those let's get back to normal kind of things, uh, the way that it has usually been normally through history is that people have had an impact on their environment, whether it was deforesting, like the Mayan, uh, was it the Mayans or the Aztecs? I don't re personally remember, but there was a Central American uh, uh, indigenous peoples nation, and uh, they wanted a lot of plaster for all their pyramids. Again, I can't remember was the, whether it was the Mayans or the Aztecs. For our practical purposes, it doesn't really matter. But it took a lot of raw energy uh, to to fire all of their, their lime, to make their lime plasters and everything. They deforested their entire area, and once they destroyed their environment, their civilization collapsed. It crumbled. That has happened time and time again throughout human history. That is getting back to normal. That is what is normal to be humans, is to spread and destroy your environment, have it collapse, and have your numbers suffer for it. I like to think that we're not doomed to always be like that. I like to think that we can improve and evolve and develop over time. I like to believe that that's true. I have like almost a religious belief in that, not based on evidence, but just because I want to believe that, and it really doesn't matter whether I believe it or not. Uh, it makes me happier to believe that we have a positive direction. But history has suggested that if we have any kind of a positive uh, direction going in that, um, uh, going towards that, uh, we're not moving very fast in that direction, and we're probably not going to make it this time either. Whether it is human-caused or whether it is not human-caused, I don't think we're going to rise to the challenge this time any better than we did any of the other than we did any of those other times. Uh, so it would behoove all of us to get ready for us to fail yet again to uh, to not destroy ourselves. Uh, and so it really doesn't matter whether it's human-caused or not human-caused. Climate change 
happens throughout history. And we got to get ready for it because there are there is a lot of writing on the wall right now that we are moving into another big change, whether that's human or whether it's not human. The change is all around us. We're seeing it everywhere. Uh, and uh, that is going to have an impact on a lot of parts of our uh, ability to sustain ourselves, specifically access to food and water. Get those squared away. If there are bumps in the supply chain, and if you don't believe there can be bumps in the supply chain, you probably haven't been alive for the past couple years, uh, but supply chain bumps happen. They've been happening. I think that we are going into a period where there are going to be a heck of a lot more than those, uh, more of those. And it's kind of like, um, you know, the power grid. If you're dependent on the power grid and you can't do anything in your house uh, without that power grid, you know, things are going to be difficult for you. If you get a battery backup in your house and you can charge the batteries up when times are good and the power grid's running, and then when the power goes out, you can kind of survive off those batteries for a while, that can make your life a lot more comfortable. Uh, and the same can be done with food, with a pantry. If you can get your uh, pantry together while supplies are um, available at the moment, get stuff cheap, uh, you know, when things are available, uh, that is going to make it so that if there are bumps in the supply chain, th those supplies, that pantry is going to be like your ba battery backup and you're going to be able to you know, weather those uh, supply bumps without having to suffer through it like everyone else. And in addition to that, you're going to help make the world a better place for everyone else as well because when everyone else is clamoring for those scarce goods because the goods have become scarce, you're not going to be competing with those people, good for you, and also good for all those people because they have one less person to have to compete with. So by preparing for this yourself, you're making the future shortages less bad for all the other people. I know that preppers have been almost uh, equated with hoarders, that, like, you know, by us having a big pantry, it's somehow taking away from other people. But we are really helping to reduce the impacts when there are shortages, because when there are shortages, I'm not going out, not, I'm not buying flour when it's like three times the price. I'm not competing with other people when it's scarce. I'm getting that stuff now, so I'm helping all those people that blame me later by making it so that I'm not competing with them later. There's more available for all of them. And it's win-win because it's good for me too. I don't have to pay the high prices. I don't have to, you know, be out there with the mobs and, you know, worry about whether I'm not going to get the stuff or not. Prepare now. Prepare financially. Prepare in terms of food. Think about your access to water. These things are really important. I know that other things seem important, and they are. You know, it's important to, you know, spend time with your family. It's important to, you know, take vacations, you know, so you can have quality time with people. Um, there's all sorts of things in your life that are important, and I'm sorry that I let off with spending time with your family. That is a very important thing, and you shouldn't shortchange that. Um, in fact, I wish I hadn't even included that on, on the list. You know, if you're going to prepare, prepare with your family. But there are all sorts of things that seem important, like having a reliable vehicle. Let's start with that one. Having a reliable vehicle is important for keeping your job. Uh, you know, uh, you, know you, 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 you can think of all the things that are important to you right now, but if all those things went away, what are going to be the things that are really going to be, really going to be important to you? Is being able to keep shelter over your head, having the financial resources or, uh, you know, having set plans in advance so you can keep a shelter over your head if it's snowing or raining and you're, you know, maybe you lost your home. To be able to keep food in your stomach, in your family's stomach, to keep water in, you know, uh, in, into your family so they're not dehydrating. Those are the things that are super, super important. And there's all sorts of other things that are important. Again, keeping your job is important. Being able to have a vehicle to get you to that job is important. You know, keeping your lawn short is important if you don't want to have ticks in your lawn. Around here we have lots of ticks. There are all sorts of things that are important, but there are important things and then there are important things. Focus on some of those important things right now because we're going into some rough times, I think. And if you get ready for them now, they're going to be not that bad. And if they don't happen, think about it. If we don't go into a situation where the economy collapses, somehow, you know, the American empire lasts forever. If uh, somehow the climate never changes and there's never any tweaks and there's never any supply chain uh, shortages, what have you done for yourself? You've made yourself a little bit more frugal so you're ready for it. Win. You got some more money in the bank. You get yourself a pantry. You bought stuff when it was on sale. You bought stuff when it was in bulk. So you save yourself some money there and you save yourself some trips out to the grocery store because you, know, you don't have to go out as often because you got some stuff in the house. Also win. So preparing for stuff, it's really win-win. Even if none of these things ever happen, Depending on the, uh, the preps that you take, you know, it's really, you, you don't run the, uh, the possibility of wasting your time because that's what I hear a lot of time with people. It's like, I tried the prepping thing, it was a big waste of time. It really depends on what you're doing. 
If you're preparing by making yourself more self-sufficient, self-reliant, more financially independent, if you're preparing by you know, having uh, things that you know that you're gonna need, like food and water, that can't possibly be a waste of time, and it might just be a lifesaver. That's it, good luck, and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.